Hi everyone, welcome back to Practical Pam. Did you have a good weekend? Has everyone watched our Budgeting 101 video? There's a link at the bottom if you want to watch that video after this one. If you're new to the Best Brains channel, welcome! We're adding new content all the time, so remember to click subscribe and ring the notification bell to get notified of the latest videos. Let's get started. On this episode of Practical Pam, we're going to be talking about cooking. Do you like to cook? I do. I cook for my family all the time. If you want to follow along with Practical Pam, remember we have a handout you can fill out as we go over the lesson. Check the link in the description. I'm going to explain how cooking works, what it means to cook food, how food changes when it's cooked, things like that. That's what's called food science. Food science is defined as the study of the nature of foods and the changes that occur in them naturally and as a result of handling and processing. Before we start, I want to point out that you need permission from your parents or guardians before you do anything in the kitchen. If you're allowed to make yourself a sandwich, that's different from being allowed to use the microwave, which is different from the toaster, which is different from the oven, and so on. Basically, you need to ask your parents how to properly use these things and demonstrate that you can use them safely in front of them. Practical Pam is here to teach you stuff, but I can't be the one who gives you permission. Sorry! Anyway, let's talk about cooking. What is cooking and what does it do? All food starts out raw. Food is alive, it's tough. Even things that seem soft like oranges and peaches, those have a high water content. The bits in between the water, those are pretty tough. When we say cooking, we're generally talking about using heat to change the chemical structure of a food item, breaking it down and making it easier to digest. Some foods like certain fruits, veggies, and seafood are okay to digest raw, but they're easier to digest when they're cooked. Some people can't digest certain foods because they're too tough even after being cooked. Eating a combination of cooked and raw foods is the best way to keep your digestive tract healthy. Another reason we cook food is to make it safe to eat. Bacteria are in pretty much every living thing, and many of them can make us sick. Now, one or two little bacteria floating around isn't going to hurt us, but if they're allowed to multiply on the food we eat or once they get inside us, that's when our body reacts to them and we get sick. Most bacteria cannot survive when heated up, and they can't reproduce when kept cold. Food that's kept below 40 degrees Fahrenheit and above 140 degrees Fahrenheit does not produce bacteria at a rate we would deem unsafe. We call the temperatures in the middle the danger zone. That's why it's important to refrigerate or freeze a lot of the foods we eat, and to reheat cooked food properly when we want to eat it again. So now I'd like to go over some temperatures with you. As you may have noticed, I've been using Fahrenheit temperatures instead of Celsius. When we're doing chemistry, Celsius is a lot better to use. That's what it was designed for. Fahrenheit is most commonly used for cooking in America because a degree of Fahrenheit is smaller than a degree of Celsius. What do I mean by that? Well, consider that zero degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water freezes, and 100 degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water boils. That same range in Fahrenheit is 32 degrees to freeze and 212 degrees to boil. So there's almost double the degrees of Fahrenheit as in Celsius, which means I can more accurately control how I'm measuring heat. Let's start at the bottom. At the bottom, we have the zero degrees Fahrenheit, very cold. This is generally defined as the temperature at which brine freezes. Brine is a combination of water and salt. The recommended setting for a freezer is zero degrees to make sure that no water activity in whatever foods we're getting stored in there. If there's water activity, bacteria is going to be able to grow in your food. Yuck. Next temperature is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. As we discussed before, this is the temperature at which water freezes. Most people keep their refrigerators between 34 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Like we said, anything above 40, you're starting to let bacteria breed too fast. Now, I want to make it clear that the foods we consider in the danger zone between 40 and 140 degrees are safe to eat. It's just that we don't want them sitting around for more than a few hours at those temperatures. Temperature plus time is what we're measuring. Let's get into cooking temperatures. These are temperatures that we need to heat certain foods to in order to make them safe to eat. Now remember, certain foods like sushi and beef tartare are eaten at much lower temperatures, but these items need to be kept outside the danger zone to make them safe. If you can't guarantee that in your home kitchen you can do that, 
Better to enjoy them in a restaurant that specializes in serving these dishes. When we're cooking red meat, whole pieces at least, the minimum internal temperature we want to get to is 120 degrees. We define red meat as beef, veal, or lamb. Some people like their meat more cooked, in which case we can cook it up to 155 degrees. Pork chops need to be heated to between 145 and 150 degrees. Now you may be wondering how we check something's internal temperature. You want to use a food safe thermometer. Sometimes they're called meat thermometers. It's just like a thermometer you put under your tongue to check your temperature. There are many types of thermometers you can use to check the internal temperature of food. You just have to make sure you wash it every time you use it. When meat is ground up, there are a lot more surfaces on the food. And that means that there are a lot more potential places for bacteria to exist. So we have to heat that up to 160 degrees. That includes things like uncooked sausage too. Up at the top, we have poultry, like chicken and duck. We heat those to 165 degrees, just like we do with casseroles and leftovers. Leftovers need to be heated at the highest temperatures on this list because they tend to spend more time in the danger zone after they're first cooked, so they need extra heat to make them safe to eat again. Also, it's good to remember that when you're handling any food that needs to be heated up to one of these temperatures, you must wash your hands before you cook and afterwards. Soap and water combine to get any of those bacteria off of our skin and out from underneath our nails so we can stay safe and healthy. Surfaces or utensils that come into contact with these foods before they're cooked also need to be soaked down or run through the dishwasher. You should also wash your hands before handling foods that you aren't going to cook, like fruits and veggies, so that any bacteria on your hands doesn't end up in your mouth. Food science is such a cool topic. There's so much more to cover, but unfortunately we're out of time. If you have any questions about anything I went over in this video, click the link on the description below and fill out our form. We will answer those questions in a future video. I hope you enjoyed Food Science 101 with Practical Pam. Remember to hit that subscription button, click that like, ring that notification bell, and we'll see you again. Bye everybody, bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye.